Welcome to William Tells, an insightful look inside the private music studio. This program is brought to you from Pedal Point Music in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to the first episode of William Tells. I'm Will Suit, and I'm happy you're here. Today I'm talking to you from the studios of Paddle Point Music in Atlanta, Georgia. And things are a little quiet at the moment, but later they get busy. They get busy with children and adults studying music privately, one-on-one with a teacher. Now kids get a pretty good education of music in school. So we see a lot of good musicians walk through our doors. But there's nothing to replace that one-on-one opportunity with another person sharing their experiences at an instrument and giving you an expanded opportunity to grow your own talents one-on-one with an instructor. And that's how this program is focused. What goes on in the private music studio? How can you benefit from it? And what are the results? Today, to get things started right, we want to look at the topic of why we study music. Sometimes people are stubborn about studying music. They're afraid that their creativity will be affected if someone else gives them ideas or uh, helps them in their development. I remember being like that. But the truth is, your creativity is only enhanced and made that much better by studying with a good instructor in your area of interest. We see a lot of kids walk into our doors, so they're not always aware of where their music can take them or what they're going to do with this interest. But interest is key to it. If a child shows interest in musical study, let them explore it. Find a good teacher. We'll talk about the instructor in a moment. But let's cover a few reasons of why we should study music. The first thing I would like to say is that music expands your appreciation for many things in life. Things like artistic expression. That one is almost always obvious to us that a person who is musical is artistically expressive. I love that part of music. It's not the only aspect of it, but it's a big part of it because music is an art and no two people hear or perform it the same. Might sound the same to the average listener, but the subtleties are there. And an artist, a true artist at the piano, the guitar, the violin, the trombone, whatever your instrument is, a singer, they hear and sing or play a song differently than some other artist might. Self-discipline. This is such an important part of a musician's life, self-discipline. I mean, for 30 minutes, maybe an hour a week, you sit with a private instructor and they structure that time with you and they put you through the drills of going through your scales and playing or singing through your songs and lining up your material in a logical, progressive manner. But then you walk out that door and you go home, and what do you do? Who tells you that it's time? Who sets the schedule for your practice? Who's there to tell you, okay, now I need to do this, or I need to stop and do that? You do, even as a child. Now, little children, they need their parents there prodding them and guiding them through this initially. But in time, every musician must own that practice time. They must see and hear the things that need to be uh, worked on. And they must schedule themselves and dole their time out so that everything is covered in that practice time that needs to be covered. Music helps us with symmetry in our life, or order, because music is generally orderly. 
it is set in patterns and sequences that are logical to our minds and our emotions. Studying that symmetry carries over into other parts of our lives. Music has many mental, emotional, and physical advantages when it is studied. Many studies support this, that it's healthy for your brain. I'm sure you've read articles about doing crossword puzzles or taking piano lessons in your uh, senior years to keep your mind crisp. And it's amazing what the mind can do as you grow from childhood all the way through adulthood. And music plays a role in that because of the patterns and the sequences involved. And you can see studies. I know the Royal Conservatory in Toronto, you can go on their website and read studies where people have improved their ability to pass exams and uh, succeed at a subject, all because a direct correlation to their study of music. Okay. On to another area where it's good to study music. It doesn't hurt to have a fine arts credit to put on your application for any number of things, like a college application, a job application, a club you want to be a part of. A lot of things will have a line. What fine arts have you studied? Well, studying music is a fine art. It doesn't hurt, even on your social media profile. What? Yeah, I think that's cool to open up someone's social media page and see what they're all about and see that they've studied an instrument. That's so cool. But I guess I'm quirky. All right, finally, it's a great way to get to know your world and your society. Our world is constantly being explored through music. Switch on uh, any streaming music service and you can find a diverse list of music that wraps around our world and is universal. So music helps us to understand culture, history, diversity, politics, nature, and to express ourselves about those things. Music is a great way to study your world. Those are just some of the things. There's so many good reasons to study music, but those are some of the great things and benefits that come from studying music privately with a good instructor. Now, speaking of instructors, how do you find a good instructor? That's never an easy topic to answer. I'm a little biased because I'm an instructor and I own a studio where other instructors teach and I'm a little biased toward how well they teach. But for the purpose of this broadcast, I have to be a little more open-minded. So I would say, depending on the area you're in, that you do your research. Don't just go sign up with the first person you talk to. Talk to a lot of people. And I'll say for myself, it never offends me when someone calls and gives me a phone interview about how music lessons work in my studio and what my goals are. Um, Word of mouth is a great way. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your neighbors and see who the instructors are that they've used or are using. Uh, Go to your school. And if you're an adult looking for a teacher, you want someone that's very patient And that is going to take their time, and not just your money, but take their time to help you accomplish your goals. Do your research. You can also go to the Internet. The Internet has become a great source for everything, hasn't it? Sometimes hard to know what's real and what's not. That's why it's always good to actually have an interview with that person before you commit. But you can certainly find a lot of information and a lot of people on the Internet who are in this profession and are helping students accomplish their goals. Think about all the things I said 
and sit and talk with that person. I keep coming back to that. Interview the instructor first. Look for a place that will give you a free lesson or a trial meet where you can go in and look around and you can talk with the instructor and maybe play some music for them and see if that fits uh, your needs. Then you're finding someone that you can work with and you're not wasting your time or your money on someone that's not a fit. And finally, discipline yourself to commit to that instructor's agreement with you on what the course of study will be. Follow it and be true to it. Don't cancel your lessons regularly. And I, I'm kind of delving into another subject for another time. But I'm just saying that when you look for an instructor, plan on making a commitment with that instructor. Not just for the instructor's sake, but so that you get everything out of that that uh, you're paying for and that you're spending your time of in that's the big investment really your time so there are some reasons okay here's the final part of getting started in musical study how much should i spend well, this is a podcast, and in this global world we live in, podcasts can be heard anywhere in the world. I can answer from my own studio, but you would need to contact me. <laughs> you knew that was coming, didn't you? I, I can't tell you exactly how much you should spend in your area, but there's the key, your area. When you call around, one of your questions should be, how much does a lesson cost? Now, here is something you're going to hear, and I'll tell you about uh, this approach. As a parent or an individual looking for classes, you're going to find teachers that charge on a per-lesson basis. That means that each time you're in their studio, you're charged for that time. You're going to find uh, teachers that charge uh, on a flat rate. A flat rate is just what it is. It's a flat rate. So no matter how many lessons you take with them in a, in a month, for example, you're going to pay as much as they charge for a month. Uh, if if uh, And they usually have a calendar that shows a course of study and how many lessons you get per month and when they are. And so you have to follow that. And if you don't follow that uh, schedule, you know, you still pay the same amount. That's a flat rate. And then there's a uh, a levelized pay, and that's where uh, an instructor will take uh, a number of classes and divide up how much they would charge per class and level it across that and charge you the same each month. So th those are some things to look at. And that person, you'd still be paying the same amount each month, but they would probably be uh, inclined to make up lessons. And that's uh, another topic for another time. But there are all these little uh, details. Now, something that we're big on, I think, as instructors sometimes, but that you really should be big on as a client or a parent, and that is in knowing what the policies are for your studio, all of the policies. What am I expected to do as a student? How much am I expected to pay? And when am I expected to pay that? If I miss a class, what happens? If the teacher misses a class, what happens? Do I still pay for that class, or can I make the lesson up? Those are legitimate questions. Uh, in an ideal world, everyone would be at their lesson every week and on time, uh, prepared, and bill paid. But we don't always live in an ideal world, do we? So those are some things to research as you're looking to start your first lesson and find that teacher that's the perfect fit. And also ask what the separation policy is, because if you get into the middle of it and the instructor's not working for you, you're going to want to exit. And it's not fair to you or the instructor to just walk out. Well, there may be some cases where that's true, but I don't want to go there. But uh, you you want to know what their policy is. Do I have to pay for another 30 days or two weeks or seven days? Can I just leave now? 
Find out what that is, especially if you have a really young child, because a month can be an eternity with a teacher if you have a four-year-old and it's not working. Well, there are some thoughts for you as you're starting your musical studies. I hope you've gathered something that will benefit you as you begin. In the long run, though, you want to accomplish your goals. And the idea is to play music or to sing music. So whatever you decide, make sure you keep that goal in mind, even if it takes a year or two to get to that first song that you really love and that you will embrace and say, hey, I finally accomplished a song. And it just goes on and on from there. In the weeks ahead, I have some special guests lined up, and I hope you'll be here to hear those uh, special guests and uh, to benefit from what they have to share with you. I look forward to hearing from you as well. If you have any interest in making a comment about anything you've heard on the air, or if you have a question about the topic that's been shared, feel free to contact me. You can reach me by emailing me my email address is williamtells at pedalpointmusic.com. That's williamtells, all one word, at pedal, P-E-D-A-L, pointmusic.com. And by the way, that'll be a topic in the future. What is pedal point and why do I use it as the name of my studio? Another time, another topic, another podcast. But for today, that's it. Have a great week. I look forward to having you join me in future podcasts. William Tells is a production of Paddle Point Music in Atlanta, Georgia. 